Today, we are making zero calorie sprinkles. I know what you're gonna say. Sprinkles are not that high calorie. They're like five calories for a teaspoon. Well, that's five more calories than I would like to spend on sprinkles. I know five calories doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you want a lot of sprinkles like I do, so not just a teaspoon, cause that is too small of an amount. Those five calories add up to 10, 15, 20 calories. So still not a lot, I know, but I just want zero calorie sprinkles, okay? And I'm making a video on it. I am saving you guys five whole calories. Are you excited? Please tell me you are. And those five whole calories that you will save, you can now eat two chocolate chips. But anyway, if you use a lot of sprinkles or if you want a lot of sprinkles and you don't want the sugar and you just want them lower calorie, AKA zero calorie, then we will make some homemade sprinkles right now. Let's get right into it. What we want to use is powdered erythritol, but I know not everyone has powdered erythritol. Most people have granular erythritol. And if you have granulated sweetener instead of powdered sweetener, that is completely okay. You do not have to go out and buy powdered sweetener. All you have to do is take granulated erythritol, put it in a blender and blend it up and it turns into powdered sweetener. But the thing is we need our blender dry. Sometimes drier is better. And this is one of those times we need it dry because if you have a wet blender and you try to blend sweetener, it's going to turn Turn into a wet gloopy mess it's gonna be disgusting the best way i have found to ensure your blender is completely dry a hair dryer would you expect to see me blow drying a blender in this video we are ready to blend some sweetener i have 100 grams of granulated erythritol sweetener it's a sugar substitute sweetener in here of course i'm gonna link it down below this is granular and we want it powdered so we're gonna blend it and there's nothing more i hate than hearing the sound of a blender in a video you guys know what a blender sounds like and you guys will not hear this one instead sound will cut off now <laughs> Look at that, it is a powder now. So you don't have to buy powdered sweetener if you don't want to, just buy the granular one, buy it in bulk, it saves you money. And if you ever need powdered sweetener, well, all you have to do is take a bunch, blend it up, take all of this and dump it right in here. So I have yellow and red, and we're gonna use yellow. Should I put a little bit of red in there though? I've never done that before. What do you get when you mix yellow and red? Orange? Orange, right? Yeah, it has, it literally has to be orange. It doesn't make sense, it can't, it can't just be blue. Where's blue gonna come from? And we wanna take a little bit of vanilla extract. I like my sprinkles, not just sweet, but vanilla-y and sweet. Just take this and squeeze in about a teaspoon of it. And then also take a teaspoon of water and put that in. This is not gonna be anywhere near enough liquid, but it is way better to use less than use too much. Go in with a few more teaspoons of water. And that is perfect. So it is looking like a tie-dye project right now. Look at this, look at this. There's still powdered sugar, but it is okay. I'm gonna mix this, be patient with it, and I will show you guys what it looks like when it's a sprinkled dough. So our dough is ready, it is mixed up, it is one color, and it is dry and crumbly. We wanna take this dough and turn it into sprinkles, which means we will need a Ziploc bag. Any extra dough on here? It's so sweet, it's so good. It's, it's just straight sugar, sugar-free sugar. So dough is in here, push it down to this corner and then get yourself a parchment paper that is big. You might be wondering, why do I have knives and a spoon on my parchment paper? Because the edges were rolling up and I had to get a little creative and I didn't know what to put on here. I reached into the utensil drawer, found a few knives and a spoon and now we are improvising and everything is being held down. Just like these sprinkles will hold you and me down. We want to snip the tip. Yes, we want to snip the tip lightly. Some things are better thick, but I like my sprinkles thin. So I'm going to do a very, very small cut at the very corner. Because the smaller the cut you make, the thinner the sprinkles. Just make a bunch of dots, make a bunch of lines. The shape does not matter. We just want them to be crunchy, sweet things. And the different the shapes are, the different the sizes are, the better the bites of sprinkles are when you mix them in ice cream, anabolic ice cream, or whatever you want, because textural difference, some big, some small, just makes it so much better than having everything the same size. I don't have the patience to make dots forever. So I want to show you guys that you can make dots of sprinkles and if you have the patience and keep going, but I will show you guys 
what I really like to do because it's so much easier and it is so much more time efficient. So I don't need my sprinkles to be circles. I'm okay with squares, with rectangles. The shape does not have to be perfect. They just have to be little sweet bits of crunchy, sweet goodness. They're little tiny squares. And how I made these is so much easier than piping it on. Let me show you. So you take your parchment, you put stuff down to hold the corners, and then you take all your dough and you plop it right onto your parchment. Scrape the bag and instead of using it, it's just too good. You got your dough and you just want to flatten it. You can't flatten it with your hands and you can't flatten it with a spatula because it gets too sticky. So you use the parchment to flatten it and this is exactly how you do it. Fold the other half of the parchment around and just start pressing. And you want to get this to a very thin, flat layer. Put something flat right on top and press. You can even take your oil spray and just roll it out. Or just beat it. Get yourself a box of popcorn. So now that it is a thin, flat layer, take a knife and you can use the back end of it. You don't need to use the sharp end. This is not chicken breast that you grilled for four hours and it is a piece of rubber tasting like a tire. No. It's sprinkled dough. We just want to cut this into lines and then we'll go the other way and cut them into small, tiny squares. So my biggest tip for you guys is do not try to make these the same size and do not try to make them perfect because you want some little squares, you want some big squares, you want some big rectangles. Cause when you're like mixing sprinkles in into a dessert, let's say you're putting them on ice cream, if they're all the same size, it gets boring. It's the exact same texture in every single bite. So you want to keep some big, some small. So you could just have small sprinkles throughout the whole thing. And then every few bites, you get a big chunk of sprinkle. And that is the best part. So for me to get this exact texture, it took me 24 hours. You can even leave them out at room temperature, but I like to put them in the fridge because I've noticed that it gets drier quicker. So put this in your fridge and wait patiently. The sprinkles are out of the fridge. It's only been in there for four hours and they're already hard. Look at this. So the balls, delicious. And the lines, I like to break them up now. You can see this piece, there's three sprinkles together. So I just like to tear them and they tear right apart. And what I like to do is just take these sprinkles and store them in a little glass jar. And the longer these sit, the harder they get. So tomorrow they'll be even harder. In a few days, they're gonna be even harder. That food coloring leaves a mark. But I got my little balls in here. And now I'm just gonna break all of these up. And I like the bigger chunks a little bit more just cause, I don't know, I like to have a big chunky sprinkle. I just It just feels better to me. And then of course I have these little balls to sprinkle everywhere. There's sprinkles that kind of taste like frosting in a weird way. I mean, I guess frosting is just sugar and sprinkles are just sugar, but these, these just taste like frosting for some reason. It's so weird. They're crunchy like a sprinkle, but they taste like frosting. I don't know, science. And that is how you make homemade sprinkles so easy. So real sprinkles per tablespoon, it's 15 calories and these are zero calories per tablespoon. And I know what you're saying, 15 calories is not a lot of calories. And for that, you are absolutely correct. So is it worth the effort to make homemade sprinkles? It depends how many sprinkles do you want to use? If you want to use a ton of sprinkles and want sprinkles in absolutely every single bite of your ice cream or yogurt or whatever you're eating, then it is worth it to make homemade sprinkles. But if you just want a little bit of sprinkles on top, then Maybe it's too much effort to make these and maybe you just want to buy sprinkles and use the ones that have sugar. But I looked up sugar-free sprinkles. I couldn't find it. Then I looked up keto sprinkles and then I found it because keto sprinkles are sugar-free because you can't have sugar on keto because carbs. And they're freaking expensive. A little bottle was like 15 bucks. I'm like, what? They're sprinkles. But just because they're sugar-free, they're like a million times the price. But you can make them at home. Pretty easy. You can make different colors if you want to. These have been sitting for more than 24 hours. The difference, this is a much softer sprinkle. It still has got that crunch and that sweetness, but it just breaks apart easier. You hear that? That is why, break it up, but let it sit in your fridge for at least 24 hours. They're dry enough to break up in just a few hours, but you wanna let it sit in your fridge and dry out completely because that crunch, listen.
you will only get that crunch if they dry out even longer. So in a few hours, they'll be dry enough to break apart the parchment paper and put in a Tupperware, but they won't have that same crisp crunch to it that real sprinkles do until you let them sit for at least 24 hours. And the longer you let them sit, the better. So, I mean, make a bunch of these and keep them in your fridge because three days later, oh my God, three days later, the texture is insane. It is so crunchy, but in 24 hours, they're pretty much perfect. Zero calorie sprinkles are next in the zero calorie series. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. You guys are the best. I appreciate every single one of you. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you're new, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Let's see if I can catch a sprinkle in my mouth. Let's go. I'm a professional sprinkle catcher.